This multi-hammer breaker machine has a total of six hammers, each weighing 450 kilograms. Following a designated route, the six hammers continuously pound the cement road surface, capable of striking 7,200 times per hour, breaking the concrete surface into snowflake-like patterns with a breaking depth of up to 350 milliliter. This type of multi-hammer breaker is specially invented to break road surfaces. Apart from being a bit noisy, its working efficiency is unbeatable. Each hammer is individually connected to a hydraulic lift rod. When the hammer is pushed to the highest point, the lift rod stops working, and the hammer falls by its own weight. The working principle is similar to that of a tamping machine, but with much greater force. In one day, the machine can break 7,000 square meters of road surface. This machine, along with another, is known as the Road Breaking Duo. The working principle of this machine is similar to the previous one, also relying on brute force to break the road surface. Working like a guillotine, the machine uses hydraulic lift rods to push up a rectangular hammer weighing 5.4 tons, then forcefully strikes it down onto the road surface. As the traction vehicle moves forward, the hammer continuously strikes the road surface until it breaks into elongated shapes. The height of the hammer lift can be adjusted. If the road surface is relatively thin, the hammer's lift height can be controlled to be lower. This ensures the braking effect while increasing the striking speed and overall working speed. Finally, other machines are used to shovel away the concrete debris, allowing a new concrete road surface to be laid. How about that? Isn't it fascinating? The helicopter is towing flammable liquid fuel, continuously spreading it over the forest. As soon as it touches the ground, flames shoot up immediately. However, this method is not about exacerbating the situation, but rather a technique of using fire to fight large forest fires. I believe many people witnessing this scene would feel perplexed. Faced with such a massive blaze, even dousing it with water wouldn't be timely. What's the point of adding fire to fire? In reality, this method of spreading fire is carried out to create fire breaks. Because the fire is too intense, its spread exceeds the effective control range. Extinguishing it with water doesn't yield clear results. Therefore, firefighters set up fires around the perimeter of the forest fire, burning combustible materials that haven't yet been touched by the flames. As the fire approaches, since the combustible materials have already been consumed, the fire naturally dies out. However, this method also needs to be tailored to specific circumstances. Sometimes, to ensure the safety of firefighters, they opt to use signal guns for remote ignition. Of course, the safest method remains using helicopters. Before takeoff, firefighters fill fire extinguishers with liquid fuel. Once they reach the designated area, they ignite the fuel using ignition devices. Following a pre-planned route, they create fire breaks within the forest. This not only ensures the safety of ground firefighters, but also significantly improves firefighting efficiency compared to manual ignition. What will happen to your body if you eat apples continuously for six months? On the first day, when you reluctantly eat an apple, you realize that the taste is not as bad as you thought. Apples are not only sweet and refreshing, but also provide your body with water and vitamins. After eating apples for a week, you notice that your digestive function seems to have improved and bowel movements become easier. This is because apples contain a lot of organic acids, which can effectively stimulate the movement of the stomach and intestines, making bowel movements smoother. When you persist in eating apples for a month, you are surprised to find that your bad breath has disappeared, your teeth become whiter, and your skin becomes smoother and more radiant. This is because apples stimulate saliva production in the mouth, reducing the number of bacteria, thus cleaning the mouth and whitening the teeth. At the at the same time, polyphenols in apples can prevent pigment deposition on the skin, making your skin smoother and more radiant. After eating apples for three months, you notice a significant improvement in your immune system, and your memory also becomes better. You feel full of energy. This is due to the high content of quercetin in apples, which can greatly enhance the body's immune system. Moreover, the rich nutrients in apples also promote brain development, making your memory increasingly stronger. Six months later, you have become accustomed to eating apples. Your mindset becomes positive and optimistic. And you are full of energy in everything you do. Your body feels rejuvenated. It is clear that eating apples has brought many significant changes to you. After knowing the benefits of apples for the body, will you love eating apples more? Just by placing a few black airbags, it is possible to move a ship weighing tens of thousands of tons, which is much simpler than pulling it with cables. This airbag movement technique is much simpler. The heavy object rests on the round, inflated airbags, which act like wheels underneath. With just a little push, the heavy object can be moved forward. This technique is often used to help launch ships and other equipment into the water. Previously, the common method for launching cargo ships was the gravity-assisted lateral launch, which involved tilting one side of the ship and relying on gravity to slide it into the water 
water during this process, if the ship's posture was not controlled properly, collisions could occur, damaging the hull. However, the airbag movement technique avoids this problem. When the ship or equipment reaches the shore, workers will place a row of airbags underneath and in front of it, then use a pump to inflate the airbags below. Each airbag is made of ultra-thick rubber. Once fully inflated, even with hundreds of tons of weight, they will not burst. At that point, dozens of airbags will lift the equipment. On flat ground, after removing the fixed devices, the equipment can be moved forward by pulling it with cables. Each time it moves a few meters, the airbags in front will start to inflate. Once fully inflated, they will just catch the moving equipment, continuously inflating and moving. When reaching a downhill section, no new airbags are needed. Just a push from behind will allow the ship or equipment to slide into the water on its own. Using this technique to launch ships and other equipment is not only convenient and quick, but also does not take up extra space. Applying strong pressure, a large amount of green strands are continuously extruded. Of course, this isn't making some kind of cold jelly. After several processing steps, these strands become the artificial turf we commonly see. Because it's easy to install and doesn't require frequent watering and maintenance like real grass, it's widely used in large sports fields. Workers pour a large amount of plastic pellets into the processing machine. To match the color of real grass, green additives are essential. After melting and processing, the material is extruded into strands and cooled in cold water water to set the shape. During this process, workers separate these strands, attaching each one to metal posts to prevent sticking and to facilitate stretching. Finally, the processed strands are wound onto a cylindrical drum, then move on to the weaving process. Rows of needles rapidly move up and down pneumatically, guiding the strands to weave and bind them onto the fabric base. After each section is completed, a blade at the bottom trims the excess, ensuring the grass fibers maintain a consistent length. At this stage, the product is still not durable. To to extend the lifespan of the turf, an adhesive is applied to the back of the grass mat using a roller, then covered with a layer of black geomembrane. After compacting, drainage holes are punched at regular intervals. This completes the entire production process of an artificial turf sheet. Have you ever seen this kind of pointed mouth shovel? The stones poured into it will be scattered outward along the pointed mouth, spreading evenly in the pre-dug trenches. This invention is mainly for quickly completing stone filling operations. Dump trucks will pour stones into the shovel. After filling is complete, the mechanical arm will move the shovel above the trench. Under the action of the hydraulic system, the damper will open, and the stones will be continuously scattered lightly. After the stone filling operation is completed, the pushing system will close the damper, preventing the stones from continuing continuing to fall out. Of course, this type of shovel is not only used for spreading stones, it is also commonly used for holding concrete. Mixed concrete will be poured into the shovel. Compared to stones, concrete has better fluidity, so through the guidance of the pointed mouth, it can be accurately poured into the designated position, especially suitable for road paving. Additionally, this method is very cost-effective. Precise concrete spreading not only saves labor, but also improves work efficiency. In addition to the pointed mouth at the front, the side of the shovel can also also be used as an opening. Inside the shovel, there is a mixing device, which continuously rotates during operation to evenly mix cement and sand. Then, the mixture will be poured out from the side of the shovel and filled into the pre-dug trenches. This eliminates the need for using other machinery to mix beforehand. While the machine moves, it mixes and pours concrete simultaneously, increasing work efficiency. This is how this athlete broke the world speed skating record. The skater in the footage is using all his strength to catch up with the moving aerodynamic shield ahead. Head. This skater is not an ordinary person, but the men's 1500 meters speed skating champion of the 2022 Beijing Winter Olympics, Haier Nez. He is breaking the speed skating record, and this aerodynamic shield is the key factor. Its name is the aerodynamic shield, and it is moved by a car. You can imagine it as a cylinder. As the shield moves forward, it continuously sucks in air, reducing the pressure inside. At that point, the person behind the shield is pushed forward by the high pressure, thus increasing their speed. After numerous attempts, Haier Nez is maximum speed reached 103 kilometers per hour, making him the fastest speed skater on earth. And the same method can be applied to cycling. On a large open field, behind a special racing car is a rectangular duct. And behind that duct, there is a bicycle riding. Upon close observation, you can see that the width of the duct is very narrow, making this much more difficult than speed skating. The cyclist needs to hold the pedals firmly. If they deviate from the path, they could be blown away by the changing airflow. Eventually, this cyclist broke the human land speed record for bicycle with a speed of 184 kilometers per hour. What do you think? Isn't this fascinating?
This device could save many lives. When triggered, it breaks up ice into smaller pieces, causing it to slide down the mountain slope. To effectively prevent avalanches, we need to activate the ice mass before it naturally collapses. This eliminates the risk posed by ice masses that could trigger an avalanche. A unique invention for this purpose is an air cannon installed on the mountain slope. Previously, personnel had to manually transport a specialized cannon to the base of the mountain, position it near the ice, and fire it to trigger a controlled avalanche. If the firing distance exceeded the cannon's range, helicopters were used to drop explosives in the target area. However, this process was complex. In contrast, this pneumatic cannon is much simpler. Inside its casing are multiple compressed gas containers filled with a mixture of hydrogen and oxygen. After transporting them to the base of the mountain, a helicopter lifts them to the slope where a fixed frame holds the cannon. When someone wants to trigger an avalanche, they can remotely activate the cannon, pushing the gas mixture through the barrel to break up the ice. The energy released in that moment is sufficient to fracture a one meter thick ice block. The pneumatic cannon can be reused by refilling the gas containers after each use. Truly remarkable, isn't it? You won't believe this. This bicycle can lock itself by simply folding. No need for a saw lock or any other accessories. Just one simple action and your vehicle is protected from cunning thieves. Here's how it works. You just need to unlock the slider on the diagonal bar and fold it out from the middle. Then find a pole or railing on the street. Pull the lock to remove the seat and thread it through the folded diagonal bar. Once done, use the key to lock it tight. That's it. Your bike is securely protected. This design is not only simple but also extremely smart as you no longer need to carry a bike lock. Want to unlock? Just reverse the steps, remove the seat, and reinsert it. Use the slider to secure the diagonal bar, and you're ready to ride. This design isn't new. Someone had previously invented a similar system by cutting the old horizontal and vertical bars of the bicycle and dividing them into short sections of equal length. Then, drill small holes at the same position on each section, use an angle grinder to smooth the surface, and finally string these segmented bars with steel wire and install them in the position of the old horizontal horizontal and vertical bars. Tighten and use a lock to secure them. Adjust the lock to control the tension of the steel wire, and you have a bicycle that can lock itself safely. What do you think about this unique design? Could it be the solution for those who are constantly worried about their bicycles being stolen? Have you ever seen an underground pipe repair technique of this size? Just drill a hole in the middle of the pipe, then insert this transfer pipe, making it fit snugly against the inner wall of the pipe. This is not a simple device. It is specially invented to modify underground pipes and can adapt to large pipes such as plastic and concrete pipes. When using it, you first use a cylindrical drilling machine to drill a hole in the designated area of the pipe. The diameter of the hole is usually 30 centimeters, which is the same as the diameter of the transfer pipe. Then, apply specialized fixing glue to the threads of the transfer pipe, which helps to enhance fixation. If modifying a concrete pipe, you need to apply some glue to the cut area. If it's a plastic pipe, just scrape off the plastic burrs around the edges. Then, insert the transfer pipe into the hole. Push the crossbar placed in the middle to expand the soft end of the pipe. Next, fit the rotator compatible with the pipe threads. By rotating it, you can twist out the excess part into the pipe until the soft end is firmly attached to the inner wall of the pipe. Finally, snap off the crossbar. At this point, the pipe modification work is considered complete. To connect other pipes through this pipe, just insert them into this transfer pipe. The other end of the pipe can be connected to the water inlet and outlet, allowing surface water to flow directly into the drainage pipe, effectively solving road water logging issues. Any plumbers just watch this video?